The rapid rise of data warehousing has created a wide range of professional options. With a median salary of 10 LPA, big data and analytics talents are the best paid in India. Despite the fact that skills like data analysis and SQL are constantly rising in demand. It's interesting to note that the salaries of data warehousing and business intelligence professional increase significantly with each additional years of expertise. Now before we discuss our today's agenda, do not forget to hit the subscribe button and click the bell icon. So first we will discuss about what is data warehouse architecture. Moving ahead, we will discuss about types of data warehouse architecture. Then we will discuss about properties of data warehouse architecture. Moving ahead, we will discuss about single tier architecture. Then we will discuss about two tier architecture. Moving ahead, we will discuss about three tier architecture. And at the end, we will discuss about principles of data warehousing. So let's start with data warehouse architecture. Data warehouse architecture is an approach to define the overall architecture of data communication, processing and presentation that exists for end client computing within the enterprise is actually called the data warehouse architecture. Although every data warehouse is unique, they all share certain essential elements. Online transaction processing is built into the production applications like payroll, accounts, payable, product purchasing and inventory control. These programs collect thorough information about daily operations. Now, it can be said that applications for data warehouses are created to support the user's ad hoc data requirements or what is now known as Online Analytical Processing or OLAP. These comprise tools like trend analysis, profiling, summary reporting and forecasting. Production databases are continuously updated manually or using OLTP software. In contrast, a warehouse database receives periodic updates from the operational systems typically after hours. OLTP data is routinely extracted, filtered and loaded into dedicated warehouse server that is open to user as it builds up in the production databases. Tables must be denormalized, data must be cleaned for errors and duplicacy, and new fields and keys must be added as a warehouse is filled with data to reflect the user's need for sorting, combining, and averaging data. Now, let's discuss the types of data warehouse architecture. Data warehouses and their architectural designs vary depending on the circumstances surrounding an organization. The three common architectures are Data Warehouse Architecture Basic, Data Warehouse Architecture with Staging Area, Data Warehouse Architecture with Staging Area and Data Marts. Now, let's discuss each of the architecture one by one. The first one is Basic Data Warehouse Architecture. So in this, it consists of operational systems, flat files, metadata, lightly and highly summarized data and end user access tool. Let's discuss one by one. If we talk about the operational system, data warehouses uses the term operational system to describe a system that handles an organization's daily transaction. Let's discuss about the flat files. Flat files is basically a group of data that describes and provides details regarding other data. Every file in a flat file system must have a unique name and it is a system of files where transactional data is stored. Now next comes is metadata. There are several uses for metadata in the data warehousing. For example, by condensing important information about data, metadata can make it easier to discover and use specific instances of data. Examples of extremely simple document, metadata include author, data build, and updated file size and data build. Now, if I talk about the next one, it is lightly and highly summarized data. All of the preset lightweight and highly summarized data produced by the warehouse manager is saved in this section of the data warehouse. The material has been condensed in order to improve the query performance. The consolidated record is regularly updated where fresh data is added to the warehouse. And at the end, we have end users access tool. A data warehouse main objective is to give business management information they can utilize to make strategic decisions. 
these customers employ end client access tools to communicate with the warehouse. The examples of some end user access tools can be reporting and querying tool, applicational development tools, executive information systems tools, online analytical processing tools, and data mining tools. So this comprises the tools for the end access users. Now let's discuss data warehouse architecture with the staging area. Before putting your operational data into the warehouse, we must clean and process it. Although data warehouses employ a staging area, we can still do this programmatically, a place where data is processed before entering the warehouse. For operational methods originating from numerous source system, a staging area makes data purification and consolidation easier, particularly for enterprise data warehouses where all pertinent data of an organization is consolidated. Now let's discuss data warehouse architecture with staging area and data marts. Staging area and data marts are included in the data warehouse architecture. The architecture of our warehouse could need to be altered to suit the needs of various departments. Data marts can be added to this. A data mart is a portion of data warehouse that can give data for reporting and analysis on a division, unit, department or activity within the business such as sales, payroll, production and etc. The figure shows here a scenario where stocks, sales and purchases are handled separately. In this illustration, a financial analyst wishes to examine the previous data on sales and purchase or mine historical data to forecast the consumer behavior. So this was a data warehouse architecture with staging area and data marts. Now let's discuss the properties of data warehouse architecture. The first one is separation. It is best to keep analytical and transactional operations separate as much as feasible. The second thing comes as scalability. Hardware and software architectures should be easy to upgrade as user requirements and the amount of data that must be managed and processed grows along with the numbers of users. The third thing is extensibility. The architecture must be adaptable to new functions and technological advancements without requiring a complete system overhaul. Fourth one is security. If I talk about the security due to the strategic data kept in the data warehouses, accesses must be monitored. And the final is administrability, which means that managing a data warehouse shouldn't be at all difficult. Now, let's discuss the single-tier architecture. So in reality, single-tier architecture is not frequently employed. In order to accomplish this, it eliminates redundant data in order to keep as little data as possible. The source layer is the only layer that is actually accessible. It demonstrates that data warehouses are virtual in this approach. This indicates that data warehouse is actually a multi-dimensional representation of operational data produced by the particular middleware or intermediate processing layer. Now we're gonna go through the two-tiered architecture. A data warehouse systems is a two-tier design, which is kind of defined in a large part by the demand for separation. Although it is frequently referred to as two-layer architecture to emphasize a division between physically accessible sources and the data warehouses. But in reality, it consists of four consecutive stages of data flow. The first one is source layer. If I talk about the source layer, data warehouse systems use variety of data sources as their source layer. The information may originate from an information system beyond the boundaries of the company or be initially housed in the legacy of databases or internal relational databases. The second is data staging. Data staging entails extracting the data from the source, cleaning it to remove discrepancies and fill in any gaps and integrate it to combine data from several sources into single standard schema. The so-called extraction, transformation and loading tools may extract, transform and clean, validate, filter and load source data into the data warehouse while combining the dispartrate schemata. Now the third one is data warehouse layer. A data warehouse serves as logically centralized one store for information. The data warehouse can be accessed directly 
but they can be also utilized as a source for developing data marts, which are intended for particular company departments and partially reproduce the contents of data warehouses. Data staging, users, sources, access processes, data mart schema, and other informations are all stored in the metadata repositories. And the final one is analysis. If I talk about this layer, it allows for rapid and flexible access to integrated data in order to generate reports, analyze data in real time, and model fictitious business scenarios. It should have customer-friendly GUIs, advanced query optimizers, and aggregate information navigators. Now, we are going to discuss the three-tiered architecture. The source layer in the three-tiered architecture includes several source systems. The reconciliation layer and the data warehouse layer makes up the three-tier architecture, containing both data warehouses and data marts. In between the data warehouses, the source data is reconciliation layer. The reconciled layer's key benefit is that it produces a uniform reference data model for the entire company. It also distinguishes between issues with data warehouse fillings and those with source data extraction and also integration. In some instances, the reconciled layer is also used directly to improve how some operational tasks are carried out, such as generating daily reports that cannot be adequately prepared using corporate applications or creating data flows to periodically feel external processes in order to gain the benefits of cleaning and integration. Particularly beneficial for the large enterprise-wide systems, this architecture is particularly beneficial for large enterprise-wide systems. The additional file storage space required by the extra redundant reconciling layer is a drawback of this arrangement. The analytical tools are also little less real-time as a result. The typical three-layer architecture of the data warehouse consists of the following. The first one is the lower tier or the data warehouse server. The second one is the upper tier or the OLAP server. And the final one is kind of top-notch or the front-end tools. An RDBMS-based data warehouse server makes up the bottom tier of this architecture. It might contain a metadata repository and a number of specialized data marts. Using application program interfaces known as gateway, data is pulled from the operational databases and external sources such as user profile data provided by the external consultants. The underlying DBMS provides a gateway that enables client programs to create SQL code for the server execution. If I talk about a middle tier that includes the OLAP server for quick data warehouse queries, in order to implement the OLAP server, we have the first one, a relational OLAP model, which is often known as the extended relational database management system, which converts multidimensional data functions into common relational operation. And the second one is multidimensional OLAP or MOLAP. This model, which is a special purpose server that carries out multidimensional operations and information directly. It includes a tool for data mining for the OLAP generated data as well as front-end tools for showing findings from the OLAP. So in the three-tiered architecture, we have relational OLAP and the multidimensional OLAP for the middle tier architecture. It also contains OLAP server for the fast querying. Now, let's discuss the principles of data warehousing. These are the following principles of the data warehousing. The first one is load performance. Data warehouses need to continuously load more data on the regular basis within constrained time periods. The performance of the load process should be measured in gigabytes per hour and hundreds of millions of rows without arbitrary limiting the amount of data that can be processed. Next one is load processing. Data conversion, filtering, reformatting, indexing, and metadata updating are just few of the many steps that must be completed before adding new or updated data to the data warehouse. The third one is the data quality control. The utmost data quality is required for the fact-based management. Despite dirty sources and sizable databases, the data warehouses provide local consistency, global consistency, and referential integrity. Fourth one is query performance. Performance of the data warehouse RDBMS must not slow down fact-based management. Huge complicated queries must be answered in the matter of seconds rather than hours. And finally, we have terabyte scalability. 
data warehouses sizes are growing at astonishing rate. Today, the size from few to hundreds of gigabytes and terabyte size of data warehouses are increasing. That was all for today's session. I hope so. You enjoyed our session today on data warehouse architecture. Just a quick info guys, if you want to make a career in big data, then IntelliPad provides an advanced certification in big data analytics by ENICT Council IIT Guwahati. It is taught by IIT professors and industry experts. With more than 10 years of experience, this course is designed to upskill and land your dream job.